Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a full face glam look using only, for the most part, Lisa Eldridge. So if you wanna see how to get this ultra glam look, then keep watching. Okay, we're gonna be starting with her eyes. So I'm gonna go straight into eye makeup. Now, Lisa Eldridge does not have a like an eyeshadow base or an eyeshadow primer, so I'm gonna do one of my favorite techniques. You see it all the time. I'm gonna take one of my favorite concealers. This is the Huda Beauty faux filter concealer. I'm just gonna push some on the top of my hand and let's just grab a small flat brush. This is the Angie Hot and Flashy A505. And I'm gonna just use this as a nice simple base, applying it right underneath my brow like I always do, just to kind of clean up the edges, sharpen them a bit, further define them, all those good things. And now once I have that line initially drawn on, I'm just gonna kind of bring down that product. I'm not gonna worry too much about the redness on my eyelid because what I'm gonna do is use one of her liquid Lurex shadows, it's her liquid eyeshadows, one of these beautiful, beautiful shadows as my eye base. I'm just gonna switch to my N16 and just buff out the rest of that concealer, kind of bring it down just softly with whatever's left over onto the eyelid. And again, I'm not worried about this redness that I have on my lids because I'm gonna use that liquid eyeshadow to cover it up. I have full confidence in these, all these products that I'm about to show you. I have absolute, like just full on confidence. I've, I've never tried any of these products other than the lip liner. And I have a few of her lipsticks in my possession that I have loved for at least two years now. So beautiful. I'm just so excited for this whole full face. Honestly, it's a long time coming. And I wanna say too, very big, very, very big thank you to everyone who jumped on my live a few weeks ago, maybe it was a month ago at this point, I lose track of time. But a few of you on my live sent super thanks to get this video just up and running and to get it funded. And I really appreciate you all so, so much. So thank you for making this even more possible and also for just speeding up the process and really getting me to get it done sooner than later because you know me, I can forget and I have a huge list of content that I plan on filming that sometimes gets pushed out or I forget to film it, you get it. So anyway, now that our eyes are prepped and they're, we have a nice smooth canvas, let me show you these liquid eyeshadows that I picked up. So I picked up three shades, I could not decide on one and actually one of them came in a bundle with, I forget, but I'm pretty sure the liquid illuminator, this and an eyeliner and it came with this cute bag. So look how adorable this makeup bag is. And also I got a bonus bag because I spent a certain amount on the website, so I qualified for another free makeup bag. So I have two, I'm gonna give one to my mom because my mom would like love these patterns and just vary her style. So back to the liquid shadows. I got the shades Emily, Maya, and Bianca. And I think I'm debating honestly between Bianca and Emily. It's a tough choice. Let me also show you the eyeshadow that I picked up. I picked up the shade Cinnabar. You're not gonna be surprised when you see these tones, you're gonna be like, of course, Nikki picked out this palette. I mean, I just, it's stunning. It's like my favorite kind of color story. I mean, look at this. It's a beautiful warm tone palette with shimmers and just really rich, oh, gorgeous shades. And also I love, I love the whole color story and all the color stories that Lisa has on her website in terms of her eyeshadow palettes were so unique and so spot on, so gorgeous. You can just tell this is a makeup artist makeup line and I just speaks to me so much. Just stunning, absolutely well worth every penny that I paid. Let me tell you, I paid quite a bit of money for this full face of Lisa Eldridge. This was not makeup on a budget. This was not a deal in any way, but honestly, I'm so happy to do it. I'm also just so thrilled to support another makeup artist, especially someone as iconic as Lisa Eldridge. And if you don't know who Lisa Eldridge is, first of all, I would be shocked. Second of all, in case you don't, I'm not gonna judge you, but I will link her YouTube account in the description box. She is one of the most old school YouTubers out there. She is one of the original beauty YouTubes, beauty YouTubers that you could watch. Her videos go back, uh, I think like at least nine or 10 years. 10 years, I'd say, is how far her, her videos go back. So she's been on the platform for a long time. She's an OG. On that note, we're gonna go with Bianca and I'm gonna apply this all over as my base shadow. Wow, so these are... Wow, so these are very thin in texture. They don't feel thick. Now that I've applied this to the base of my eyes, like onto the mobile lid, I'm gonna take my N16 brush and just use the tip of the brush where it has the longer fibers to just kind of gently blend into the rest of my crease. Wow. Color payoff is beautiful on these. The glitter is, or the shimmer I should say, is just breathtaking. So beautiful. And it feels like a nice thin formula. It doesn't feel like a thick, chunky, you know, thick liquid glitter shadow. It feels very, very thin, very lightweight. I feel like this would be a really great option for anyone out there who maybe has more mature eyelids, who's also 
maybe been afraid of using shimmers on their eyes because they've been told by the world that you, once you reach a certain age, you can't wear shimmers, you can't wear glitters. First of all, please don't listen to anybody that says that. Like that's so annoying and that's so not true. And wear whatever makes you happy. I don't care what age you are. If wearing a shimmer or a chunky glitter on your eyes makes you happy and makes you feel beautiful and confident, do it. Like, don't listen to any of the, don't listen to them. Don't, just don't listen to them. You better believe when I'm in my 60s, 70s, 80s, and if I'm so lucky, my 90s, I'm more than likely gonna be wearing shimmer eyeshadows and probably wearing leopard and probably wearing band t-shirts and all the things I've always loved. So I'm not gonna stop it just because someone's saying that my age is gonna dictate what I'm allowed to wear when I'm not allowed to wear. I digress. The whole point of the story was to tell you that I think this would be a really great option. If you are someone who has mature eyelids with some wrinkles or some texture, don't be afraid to use a formula like this. I think this would be a really good one because it is so thin and it does have a nice, like, smooth effect to it. Fantastic formula. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more on my more hooded eye because I need to even out the way this one looks, lightly blend it. I'm gonna go over top of this with the eyeshadows, and I'm gonna start, probably no surprise here, I'm gonna start with this beautiful mid-tone brown. This is like a perfect crease color to just start any kind of eye makeup look. It's a good foundational shade to start within your crease to build up and to create an eye makeup look. So I'm gonna use my N13. Just tap off the excess just in case. I'm gonna look straight ahead in the mirror and I'm just gonna start to build up some depth. Wow, that's beautiful. That is stunning. There is minimal to, I mean, actually I don't think I see any, yeah, I don't see any fallout with this this formula. So, so far so good with the formula. But again, I, I just have to say, I, I would expect nothing less from a Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palette. I wouldn't expect fallout, there's no way. It's Lisa Eldridge, right? I mean, she is a makeup icon a makeup legend. And if you, again, if you have not seen her YouTube channel, once I link it, I promise you, you're gonna message me. You're gonna say, I fell down the rabbit hole. I watched every single one of her videos. I was hooked. I can't stop watching her. She's so delightful and so calming to watch. She's so pleasant to watch on YouTube. She's just an amazing educator and she's still doing makeup. She's still a working makeup artist. And I just, I respect her so much. I gotta stop. I'll stop, I'll move on. Let's just get this eye makeup on. I'll stop fangirling about Lisa Eldridge. I am gonna take whatever's left over on my brush and just start to lightly shade it outwards towards my temple. You know why I, I love to do this. It elongates my eye. I am gonna pop a little bit in the inner part of my crease, right in this inner socket for some more depth. Color payoff is superb. The blendability is superb with this formula. I've only, granted, I've only used one shadow from this palette, but I'm imagining they're all gonna be the same. Very easy to work with. I do love the size of this palette too. Like this is a really nice compact size. So if you're traveling or if you do your makeup generally on the go, or if you just don't want to take up a lot of counter space with a huge eyeshadow palette, it's a nice thoughtful palette. It's not too big. Okay, so just repeating the same steps on this eye. I'm loving the way that liquid shadow looks. And it's, I bet you these would just be like the perfect one and done eyeshadows. Like if you want to just put one all over, blend it out, diffuse the edges, put some liner on, mascara and call it good, it would be a perfect one and done eyeshadow look. And speaking of one and done eyeshadows, I actually did a full video on my YouTube channel about my favorite one and done eyeshadows. They were mainly creams and some liquids, but I feel like I need to do an updated video, an updated version, because I have some new favorites I'd like to mention. Switching to one of my favorite blending brushes on the planet, it's an Angie Hot and Flashy, it's the A504. Funny story too, there's something about this brush that is just, I can't live without this brush. And you know, when I was making my brush set with BK Beauty, if they hadn't had a brush like this already in their collection, with, especially with Angie Hot Flashy, if they hadn't had this brush in existence, this would have absolutely been included, like this exact style of brush would have been included in my, in my Pro Artist Series set. It's just the perfect mini, little mini blender, like a little mini blending brush that you just have to have. So taking that perfect mini blending brush, I'm gonna dip into this rich caramel brown and we're gonna start to build up some intensity and some hopefully sexy, smoky effect in the outer corner. So I'm gonna build this up and I'm not using a big brush for this because I want it to be a little bit more precise and I wanna have more control. So by using that small brush, I'm gonna have a lot more control of where this product goes. Mm, beautiful. It's a really pretty rich brown. With whatever's left over, I'm lightly sweeping this in the actual crease of my eye. It's gonna create more depth, even more dimension to my eye. Wow, just gorgeous, just beautiful. Let's take a little extra right here. I mean, these are just so impressive. They're such gorgeous shadows. We're gonna move on to eyeliner. Now I do have three eyeliners to choose from. I think I'm gonna probably end up using two out of the three because one is like a deep, 
hunter green. It's so stunning. I actually bought this for my pro kit, but now I'm kind of thinking I should keep it for myself because it's so stunning. It's the shade Night Forest. Let me just show you it. Look at Night Forest. Absolutely gorgeous. These pencils I've been wanting to try since she came out with them. They're a newer release for her. I don't think they've been around for more than six months. Maybe I'm wrong, but I know they're newer for her collection. They're newer to her collection. The other shade I got is Burnt Umber. Beautiful, rich, more red tone brown. And then last but not least, I have ground coffee. Ooh, yeah. Ground coffee is going to be good. Just a perfect, neutral, deep, dark brown. These glide on your eyes or they glide on so smooth, so effortlessly. They're very, very richly pigmented. So they're actually, they're, they remind me a lot of the Victoria Beckham Kajal liners. Those are like a really creamy, highly pigmented formula. These have a very similar texture. So if you know those and you like those, you'll love these. I'm going to use ground coffee to tight line my top lash line first. Ooh, that is a pigmented pencil. Wow. Now I'm going to take burnt umber and burnt umber is going to go on the top lash line. So I'm going to just line. I'm going to stop about less than halfway. And I'm going to drag this one across my bottom lash line. It's funny, this color actually looks almost exactly like my eye color. I'm gonna take a clean N12 brush. I'm gonna smudge this out and pull it out and reshape it. Now, lucky for us, we can get in there. We can get a little messy and we can really do our blending without worrying about wrecking the foundation underneath because I haven't done my foundation yet. So that's the beauty of doing your eyes first, especially if you don't know what kind of look you're gonna go for. You never know what could happen. So unless you know you're going in with a an idea that you're gonna do like a natural, more daytime eye makeup look that's not smoky, then you can do your base first. Then that's totally fine. These liners blend out extremely easy. Amazing. On to the next eye. Blend it out. Now that my eyeliner is on, I'm actually gonna go back and apply a, one more coat of the liquid eyeshadow in Bianca because I just want a little bit more impact than what I have right now. And after all that blending back and forth, kind of end up just inevitably blending some of the product off. These really are just so easy to work with. I have to get more of these for my makeup kit. These would be so easy to pop on my clients. Stunning. Okay, back to that small mini blender from Angie Hanaflashi. And back to the palette. I'm gonna dip now into this deep charcoal gray. And we're gonna intensify this look. We're gonna add this into the very inner corner of the crease. Keep it nice and tightly applied in this inner socket of the eye. Now what I'm doing is just gonna bring it back down and ever so lightly connect it to that bottom liner that we created, that wing, and smoke it out. Grab my N13 one more time. I'm not getting more product. I'm just gonna use whatever product is left over on the brush to just lightly blend out the rest of this. Same thing on this eye. Connecting it back down to the wing liner on the bottom. Same thing. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna use a clean Angie Hot Flashy A504. Dip into this champagne shimmer. I want to use this as a tear duct highlight. Wow. Well, that's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> that is a stunning shade. That's going to be messy for a while before we clean this up, which we will in just a bit. Beautiful. Now, I really predict that a brow bone highlight is going to come back for 2024. So dust off your nylon eyeshadow from MAC and mark my words, I, I really believe that liquid lipsticks, for one, full glam and a brow highlight is going to come back. That's going to be my prediction for 2024. So let's see if I'm right. Okay. Now Lisa Eldridge does not have a lash curler or mascara. So I'm going to use two different brands. One is going to be Refi. This is the lash curler from Refi. I love this one. I'm going to curl my lashes. And the mascara that I just feel like would be Lisa Eldridge approved is the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. This mascara, if you know, you know. It is a fantastic, very dramatic mascara that's worth every every penny. And I used to go back and forth with that in terms of like, is it worth it? I feel like there's so many drugstore mascaras that are just as good, if not better. There are, but there's something really magical about this YSL mascara, I just have to say. And I am such a drugstore mascara girly through and through, but this mascara is just different. Look at that. That's one coat. It actually just came out with a waterproof version too, which I think I might pick up. So it's always good to have a good waterproof mascara on hand, you know, for like weddings, rainstorms, marathons, whatever you're doing that you don't want your mascara to run. It's good to have a good waterproof mascara on hand. Okay, mascara is done. And we're gonna move on to the face. But before we do, and I'm gonna take a makeup wipe and just gently clean this up. I'm so excited because I have some beautiful 
complexion products from Lisa Eldridge. Now, the first product I'm gonna use for my complexion is actually her setting spray, but from what I understand, from what I read on her website, this is a multi-purpose product. It's great for like rehydrating your skin throughout the day and refreshing it, getting some moisture back into it. It's also great for softening your skin and hydrating it prior to your makeup application, which is what I'm gonna do first. And then of course, you can use it as a setting spray after your makeup is complete. I'm gonna shake it really well and let's re-soften our skin because my skin prep has been on for a very long time at this point and my skin is dry to the touch. This is gonna help to just rehydrate, like I said, get it going, get it nice and soft and freshened for the rest of the makeup to go on top. So I'm gonna close for a second. I did cover my eyes because my mascara is definitely still a little wet, so I don't wanna get it running or transferring. Now the first product for complexion that I'm gonna put on is actually her liquid illuminator. I am so excited for this product. You know I love a good liquid illuminator, especially one that comes with a doe foot applicator. This has a doe foot applicator. This is the shade Cosmic Rose that I picked up and okay. Nice, feels very thin. Actually feels like a serum. Doesn't feel like a typical like makeup-y liquid illuminator. I'm gonna take my N17 and just work this into my skin. Oh yeah, that's very light, very hydrating. Like feels incredibly hydrating on my skin. It's leaving a really nice subtle glow. It's not like a glittery glow. It's more like a healthy sheen. Can you see that? Very healthy looking sheen, feels nice. I feel like it's gonna play really well under makeup. I'm gonna put some on my forehead. This definitely reminds me of the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury and also the e.l.f. Halo Glow that I love. I love both of those, but in a much thinner formula. So it's not as full coverage as those other ones are. Not that those are full coverage, but they do offer quite a bit of coverage for being an illuminating product. This is more of like your actual sheer liquid illuminator without pigment behind it, if that makes sense. So that's beautiful. Wow. Feels amazing. My skin is dewy and juicy and illuminated. Let's move on to foundation. I can't even tell you how excited I am to have this foundation in my hands. And actually, side story, I did pick up two shades because I wasn't sure what shade I was gonna be. It's always a gamble when you're purchasing shades on a website. You're not able to swatch them and see them and see like actually what the colors and the undertones look like in person. So, Let's hope I guessed right. The shades that I picked up are number 16 and number 13. I wanna say I'm gonna be number 13. I picked up the number 16 just in case this was too light. It looked close to my skin tone, but um, I thought maybe it could lean on the light side. So I got that number 16 just in case. So I pumped some on the top of my palette. I'm gonna take the same brush, same side of it, and work this in the center of my face. Okay, so number 13, pretty much a spot on match for my complexion. I'm so happy right now. I don't have to walk around pretending this color matches my skin just to for the sake of using it and getting my money's worth because I'm not gonna return this. That is a relief, wow. So it looks like that number 16 is probably gonna go to my pro kit. Okay, blending, wow, blending beautifully. Okay, that is, wow, that's a stunning foundation. I feel like this is more of a sheer coverage than I was anticipating. So let's see. The back of the box um, says, this intelligently formulated self-setting foundation blends effortlessly to smooth and unify skin with a natural looking soft focus finish. Skin friendly formula gives customizable coverage that fuses seamlessly with your skin. Start with a little, build to your desired level and enhance perfection. All right, I like it. All right, so it is definitely a buildable coverage like it says. It is very light and feeling. Does not feel like a heavy foundation whatsoever. I mean, it just melted into my skin with minimal, minimal effort. I can see how it's definitely layerable. I did layer it already on my cheeks as I was talking, but the blend is, wow. Okay, that's a fantastic foundation. That is a fantastic foundation. I am so excited. You're gonna definitely be seeing me wear this a lot on my channel. Let's pop some on my forehead. I'm so proud of myself for picking the right shade. I'm so relieved. I can't even tell you, I was so stressed out making this purchase and that's why I got that backup one just in case, but I didn't even need it. I'm so sad because I did not need it. I'm gonna blend a little bit more and just see how well this builds up. Yeah, okay. It's building beautifully without looking heavy. It's a big, big selling point to me. If you could build up a foundation without it looking heavy, that's a, a win right there. Beautiful, wow. I feel like this would be a great foundation for any skin types. I can't imagine this not working for even someone who has oily skin, even though it has a, a really nice satin finish with a glow, I think this would definitely be a great formula for more oily skin as well, especially dry skin, of course. This would work beautifully. Combo, normal. This is 
stunning. Okay, I need to move on because I could talk about this foundation for a lot longer and this video would be two hours long. So let's move on. But wow, wow, Lisa, amazing. That is an amazing foundation. If I didn't mention the name, by the way, the name is Seamless Skin. Everything will be linked, don't worry, including the names. If I forget to mention any of the names, it'll all be linked down below. So she does not have concealer like I mentioned. And actually, before I get into concealer, we're gonna do some cream bronzer. I She does not have a cream bronzer or a powder bronzer, so we're gonna have to incorporate some other brands, sadly, into this makeup application. And for this, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer in the shade two and my N15. And we're just gonna warm up the skin very lightly. Just gonna go for warmth, not a contour, just some warmth. So blending it back and forth for a nice natural diffused finish, not too heavy. This is blending really nice on top of that foundation. That's a great thing to point out. So it's interacting really well formula wise. Love that. It's so funny, I haven't used this bronzer in a minute and I was looking through my bronzers and I thought, I've been using the Rare Beauty a lot lately. I've been using the LYS a lot lately. And I thought, you know, I just need to switch it up. I need to go back to some old favorites that I haven't touched in a while. I feel like as a makeup artist and just as a makeup wearer, we kind of get stuck using the same products daily, right? And unless we like physically move them out of the way and bring some other products to the table, we forget about them. I don't know if you can relate to this. If you can, leave me a comment and let me know. But this was like, out of sight, out of mind, and I want to like bring it back and use it before it expires. <laughs> Bronzer is almost done. I'm gonna take a little bit more. I'm just gonna use the same brush and do a nice light natural amount of color on my nose before I go in with my concealer and kind of clean up the edges of this. So this is a really quick hack to warm up your nose and also to contour your nose if you're trying to contour your nose. Just kind of get it all over. It's gonna be messy. It's gonna be all over the place. But then let me show you how to fix it. So. Again, she does not have concealer. I'll be using the Huda Beauty Full Filter Concealer, the same one that I used on my eyelid earlier. The shade that I'm using is Vanilla Swirl. I'm gonna line it up. And you see by just kind of lining it up along the side of the nose, it cleans up that cream bronzer and it will instantly contour your nose. So it's a great hack. Do a little bit in the center of the forehead between the brows and straight down bridge of the nose around my nose where I need a lot of extra coverage these days and a little on the chin. Now, before I actually blend it out, I'm gonna take more of the setting spray and I'm going to lock this in. Taking my N16 brush with BK Beauty, I'm gonna just pat this concealer in and blend it out. You know, I have to say, I was actually really surprised that she doesn't have a concealer yet. I'm sure it's in the works because, I mean, if her foundation is this fantastic, I can only imagine what she would come up with in terms of a concealer. Who knows, maybe we'll see her announce it soon. That would be awesome. I'd be like the first one in line to buy it. Okay, we did a little pre-blend and we're actually gonna leave the nose highlight to sit and marinate a little bit longer and to dry down and self-set on its own. Now, one thing I am curious about is the foundation says to be a self-setting formula. So I'm gonna let it dry down as long as I can to see how well it will dry down and self-set on its own. And that way it'll really minimize the amount of powder I have to go in to uh, lock this in. So let's kind of let it be and chill for a minute. Now that's dried down a touch more, I'm gonna go in with my N14, buff out the rest of the concealer, and then we can go in and set the under eyes with powder. Now, of course, she does not have powder, so I will be using my tried and true, my BFF, the Givenchy Prism Leap Powder in the shade number three to set my under eyes. But I'm gonna definitely avoid majority of the rest of my face because for two reasons. My skin's been a lot more dry lately. It is winter currently and the weather is very harsh. It's very dry, it's very windy and that's been chapping my skin and just sucking the moisture out of it overall. So I've been using a lot less powder as I normally do in the winter months than I typically do in the summer months or the warm months. So I'm gonna avoid powder and majority of the rest of my face and just keep it to under my eyes because I always lock in my concealer with powder. Beautiful. So I'm gonna take some of my Givenchy powder, dump it in the cap. Same brush, I'm gonna use my N14. This is one of my favorite ways to set my under eyes is just dipping into that powder, tap off the excess, and I'm gonna press this under my eyes to lock it into place. I mean, look at the difference already between this eye and this eye. It's like smooth airbrushed. And not this is bad, but I just love the way this makes my under eyes look. Now the only areas of the rest of my face that I am gonna touch are just around my mouth. This is something I always do for longevity for my lip colors, personal preference, and just a little bit of whatever's left over on my brush, just right here between my brows. I don't like a lot of shine here. I'm fine with shine all throughout the rest of my forehead, but right here, it's not the cutest. So I'm just gonna blot this and mattify right there. And we're gonna leave the rest fully glowy. 
Now I do want to test out this liquid illuminator as a topper, like a, a finishing kind of highlighter. So I use it underneath my makeup. It's beautiful. It works really well with the foundation. Let's see. Let's put it to the test. Let's see what it looks like as an actual highlighter on top of my makeup. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to just apply some to the back of my hand. I'm going to grab my N17 again. I'm going to use the light fiber side, the same side that we used for the foundation and this product initially. I'm going to work it onto the brush so it's nice and evenly distributed throughout the fibers of the brush. And then we're going to tap it on and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's working out. Wow. I went a little too high, so we're just going to mattify this area right here. I went a little too far up on my cheekbone. Just pressing it lightly and being very delicate because this is going on top of layers of foundation and now concealer and a little bit of powder right here. So I'm just keeping that in mind, being very careful and like strategic with how I'm applying this onto that area. I mean, it's so natural. It's so fresh and just juicy. It's like a juicy glow to my skin. Whatever's left over, let's just tap a little bit more on my nose, bring some glow back to this area. And why not? Let's do the top of the forehead. Wow, that's absolutely stunning. We need to go back to this eyeshadow palette really quick. Now that my under eyes are set and they're locked into place, I'm just gonna work off the excess amount of shadow on this brush, go back to this mid-tone brown that we used initially in the crease. And I'm gonna use this to diffuse that bottom lash line and to further smoke it out Hmm, beautiful. Now I'm so excited for the lip combo that I have in store. One of the lip products is a lip liner that I have had my eye on for a long, long time. And it's in the shade, I forget the name, Muse. Muse I actually wanted to buy, again, almost like two years ago when I first initially bought my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks and a few other lip liners. I wanted to buy that lip liner ages ago and it was sold out. So I never got my hands on it until now. So I'm so excited. I am hoping that it's going to be dark enough or at least compatible to the liquid lipstick that I purchased as well. So we'll see in just a bit. Let me just finish smoking out this bottom lash line. Oh, it's so good. These shadows are just fantastic. All right. We are smoky. We get to move on. Time for Muse. I'm going to go directly in with this lip liner and let's see. Ooh, it's a little bit lighter than I thought it was going to be, but I think we can make it work. I mean, this would be so beautiful on its own and just topped with the lip gloss that I picked out, but if you've not tried Lisa Eldridge lip products or lip liners, I, I'm already a big fan of these lip liners. They're so smooth, they're so creamy. They're extremely long lasting on the lips, which is always something that I look for with a lip liner, especially in the formula. It has to be long lasting, has to be smooth, has to be all those things. This lip liner is just fantastic. Now the lipstick I picked out is actually the Velveteen liquid lip color. I picked up the shade Affair. Oh, the pictures of this on the website, the models that it was used on, oh my gosh, it looks so beautiful. Hopefully I could do it somewhat of a justice, but the shade just looked so rich. It looks such, like such a rich lip color. Full disclosure, okay? I am more than likely gonna put this in my pro kit because I picked this out with a client in mind that I wanna use it on. So I'm not gonna be using this applicator on my lips. I'm sorry. It's a doe foot. We all know how it's gonna work. So instead, I'm gonna just push some on the top of my palette and I'm gonna use a brush. I'm actually gonna use my N12 brush, a clean one, to apply this liquid lip. So just to keep it sanitary because I'm, I'm more than likely gonna put it in my pro kit. Wow. Okay, that is a fantastic liquid lipstick formula. It does not feel like your typical liquid lipsticks. I know I've been saying that a lot, it feels like recently, but liquid lipsticks, I just have to point out, they have come a long way. Don't be afraid of them. Don't think that they're all gonna be like the 2014, the 2016 liquid lipstick formulas that we all knew that were really dry, really heavy, and kind of cracked on your lips. They have come such a long way. And like I said, mark my words, they're coming back this year. I think 2024 is gonna be, you're gonna see a big comeback with liquid lipsticks. So this is a velveteen, it says. It's a velveteen formula. I think what that means is it's just gonna be less drying, more of a comfortable velvet feeling on your lips, and it really is a very comfortable feeling. So it's drying down pretty quickly, which I think is good. Just applying a little more. It's definitely darker than the lip liner I picked out. It's okay, we made it work. You can't win them all, but how pretty is that? Hmm. That's definitely going to my kit, 100%. That color, a fair, wow. That is just stunning. Let's see if it's dry. Pretty much, I mean, it was quick. It feels incredibly comfortable. We're gonna top it with gloss because I can't help myself, you know? I had to buy everything I could from Lisa Eldred, so that included gloss. Now, does it make sense to top a liquid lipstick that is supposed to look matte and have a matte finish with gloss? 
No, but there's no rules with makeup, so you can do whatever you want. And actually, it's one of my favorite tricks as a makeup artist. I use a lot of liquid lipsticks in my kit for clients that I do makeup on and then I leave them. Like, I'm not with them all day to touch them up. I need them to have a good base layer of color that's going to last a long time. And then what I do, because most of the time they don't like that feeling, is I'll top that liquid lipstick with a more satin or creamy finish lipstick or lip gloss. So, and by the way, I just did the same thing. I'm just going to put some out on my palette because I don't want to use a doe foot applicator. I want to put this in my pro kit. I know, sorry. It's kind of boring, but I just have to be honest with you. I also bought this one to go with this combo to use on a client. Maybe I'll buy myself a backup. So let's now top a fair velvet lipstick with sorcery lip gloss. Same brush. Oh. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. This might be my new favorite lip combo I think I've ever come across. Like this lip tone just screams luxury. Like it's giving expensive. And it was. Well worth it though. Absolutely well worth it. Now, one thing we're gonna just kind of take a risk with is Lisa did not have blushes. She does not carry blushes in her collection. So we're gonna go back to the Velveteen Lipstick. Now this is a really old school trick. You can use your liquid lipsticks, depending on the formula. If the formula is a good formula, you can use them as a blush. They are highly pigmented, highly concentrated, products. So don't be afraid to get in there and think outside the box. I'm going to use my N17, the lighter fiber side. Once again, I'm going to dip into that liquid lipstick, pre-blend it, get a whole bunch on my brush. And you can see too, it's blending out nice and even. It's not patchy. So that's a good sign. That means we're going to be able to definitely use this as a blush. And also the good thing about this is it gives my makeup a very cohesive look. So we're not trying to, you know, match a, a different blush color entirely to the lip to give this a cohesive look. It's gonna instantly be cohesive because it's the same exact tone, it's the same product. So whenever in doubt, don't be afraid to use your lipstick as your blush and your lipstick. Use them together, use them for multiple purposes. Don't be afraid. Be your own uh, Bob Ross, be your own Picasso with makeup. Okay, that's beautiful. Wow, layering really nice. I am being very careful, of course. I don't wanna push my luck here. Wow, that's quite a look. And because it's such a natural thing for me to do, I just have to sweep a little bit onto my nose. We're gonna do one final round of the setting spray. And that is the final step in this full face of Lisa Eldridge. This video was so much fun to film. I hope you enjoyed this super glam look that I created today using only Lisa Eldridge. If you haven't checked out her products, I highly recommend you do. There's some incredible quality, incredible formulations. They'll all be linked below in the description box. If you like videos like this where I do a full face of one brand, you can check out more right here. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all so much. See you soon. I'm